If you guys want to know how to make an NPC that can hear your voice chat in Roblox Studio, then watch this video all the way to the end. Hey guys, in today's video, I'll be showing you how to make an NPC that can hear your voice chat in Roblox Studio. Let's get into it. So the scripts will be in the description and let's get started. So first we want to enable voice chat for our Roblox game. And make sure that you have voice chat enabled on your account by being above 13 or submitting an ID, I think it is. Um, and then once you've got voice chat, then what we want to do is click on file and publish our game. I'm going to call this NPC voice test. Obviously, you can call it whatever you want. And the rest of these don't matter. So let's create the game. So now that our game has been created, click on file, go to game settings and go to communication and enable the microphone. Make sure to save this. And another thing we must do is change the, um, the max player limit. So the max players. You must set this to a number below 50. I'm going to do 5. Okay. Next, we have to right click on, uh, on Explorer and click on Show Services. Click on Voice Chat Service and insert it. Then click on voice chat service, go to properties and find use audio API and enable this. Cool. So for some reason, Roblox Studio has this bug where it won't give you voice chat all the time. You can see I get this little error message. So to test this, we will actually do it in the actual Roblox game and I'll do that later in the video. But first we need to insert a, a bool value into starter character scripts. So insert a bool value. And we're going to rename this to talking. Cool. And then next we must add a remote event into replicated storage and call this talking re for remote event. Cool. Now we need an NPC in the workspace that uh, will actually go to the player's position. So click on avatar character and I'll just get a block avatar. Cool. Make sure that the whole avatar is unanchored by going to home up here and clicking on anchor and making sure that it is not gray. Cool. Now we can rename this to NPC or whatever you like. You'll just have to change the name of it in the script later. Cool. So next insert a local script into starter player scripts and name this to voice chat script and get rid of hello world. So this script will be in the description. Let me quickly go get it. And there we go. This is the whole script. And let me quickly go through it with you. So first it declares all the variables. It gets the players as from the service for the players. Okay. And then next we get the NPC in workspace. So if you've named it something else like rig or if you've named it monster, make sure in the script you change NPC at the end to monster or the name of your NPC. Next, it gets replicated storage so that it can get the talking remote event that we made earlier. Then we've got a function up here to connect a wire between audio emitters and audio analyzers so that the NPC will actually be able to hear a voice chat. Cool. Let's go a bit further down. So it loops through, oh, sorry, here it loops through the players. And for every player there is, it runs the on player added function right here. And whenever a player joins the game, it also runs the on player added. So when a player gets joined into the game, it gets it creates a new audio device input and names it to microphone input. And then it checks for the character. And if there is a character, then it runs the character spawn function. And also when a player respawns, then it will run this function. Now inside of this function, we create a new audio emitter and we call it NPC follow. You can change this name to whatever you like. That's just what I've called it to. Next, it runs the connect function to connect the microphone input to the emitter. The microphone input is this one down here. Next, it creates an analyzer and then it does the same thing. It connects the microphone input to the analyzer. So next, it gets the talking value inside the character, which we made over here. And then it's got variables for debounce time and last update for to change this value here because we use a while true do loop and it uses a task doc wait so that the script does not break and then it uses a current time for the tick to check the update time and the debounce time 
Next, it checks if the analyzer RMS level is greater than 0.05. And the RMS level is basically the amount of noise that comes through your microphone. So I've set it to 0.05, but you can set this to a lower number to like 0.01 if you want it to be very sensitive. Next, it checks if the talking value is false. If it is, it fires the remote event and then it changes the last update. And then there's an else here, which does the opposite. So if, if you stop talking and it checks that the value is true, then it sets it back to false to show that you're not talking. And we cannot update this on uh, the local script. It needs to be done with the server script, which is why we have a remote event uh, that we fire. So that is all of that script. Next, we have to make a script that receives the remote event firing event, and it actually changes the talking value with a script. So to do that, insert a script into service script service. You can name this to whatever. I'll just call it talk value script, since that is what we are changing. And get rid of the hello world. And this script will also be in the description. Let me quickly go get it. So here's the script. It is a pretty short script. All it does is it gets replicated storage as a variable, and then it gets the talking remote event in there. And whenever it gets fired using the on server event function, we, uh, the player gets sent through it. So whenever you fire a remote event from a local script, the player is always the first thing that gets sent. So you can see if I click over here, the first thing you get is a player. So the player needs to come first, even if you're not using it, the player just has to be declared so if we get rid of this and we only use value, this will not work. You can see the AI is actually telling me to put player in. Next, it gets the value because we sent through true or false to change the value depending on what we need it to do. And then we sent through the character as well so that we can get into the character and change the talking value to the value that we have sent through. Cool. Okay, guys, so next, insert a script into the monster or the NPC, sorry and rename the script to AI and get rid of hello world. Next, paste the script that will be in the description and I'll quickly go through it. So first we declare the variable for the NPC, which is script.parent. Next, we find the humanoid inside of it. And then afterwards we get the pathfinding service so that we can actually pathfind to the player that it heard. Because if we don't use pathfinding, here's an example quickly. If we don't use pathfinding and there is a wall in the way, it will just try and go straight through the wall. But with pathfinding, it will actually go around the wall. And that is why we use pathfinding. Cool. Next, we get the player service because we need to detect which players are talking and get their character and move towards them. And next, we get the primary part inside of the NPC. So we can determine the distance between the monster and the player. Next, we've got a table for the players that have been talking. And next, we get the primary part and we set the network owner to nil. Next, we've got a function to get the closest player. And you can see there's a table in it, which is the players talking. So we've got a few variables here. We've got closest player, which is set to nil. And the shortest distance, which is set to math.huge. And the max distance that is set to 50. This way, if there's a player talking that's too far away, uh, the NPC won't move to them because obviously the NPC can't hear. It won't, it, it's not realistic, realistic if it can hear from like 100 studs away. Next, we loop through the table and we get the character of the player that was in the table. And we check if the character exists and if it's got a humanoid root part and if the, humanoid, if, if the humanoid's health is greater than zero. That way, we are checking if they are alive. Next, we check the distance between the player and the monster using magnitude over here. And next we check if the distance is less than the shortest distance and distance is less than max distance. Then the shortest distance will be set to this distance and the closest player will be set to that player. And then we return the closest player. Cool. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. Next we have a function to move to the player and we've got player player position in brackets over here. Next, we declare a variable for path and we create a path for, from the pathfinding service. Next, we've got a few things inside of the parameters here. So we've got the agent radius, which is set to two, and the radius is this basically. So if we uh, click on the NPC 
copy the position and paste a part position to there and we move it up to somewhere like the middle you can see if we stretch this out to the end of where they are so the end is over here and move this back into the middle we get a number two and this is the radius of it and the diameter or diameter sorry would be four so it's two and that is what we set in the script because it's checking the size of the npc that way if there is something like a wall in the way it can detect how big the player or the npc is to go around the corner otherwise the arms could get stuck on the corners like this and it wouldn't be a smooth path cool next we've got the asian height which is if we create a part from the bottom of the character all the way up to the head which this in this case is 5.105 and we round it down to five cool next there's another parameter called asian can jump i've got this set to true so if there's something like a little part in the way it will jump over this next we've got the jump height so if we click on the monster and we go down to jump Power. this one's called jump power if we untick use jump power it will change to jump height and this is 7.2 which i've got it set to in the script then it's got the max slope which is the slope that it can go on and if you click on the humanoid the max slope is 89 so i set it to 89 in here next we compute the path from the primary path position to the player's position that it heard and it checks if the path was a success then it gets all the waypoints from the npc to the player and for every waypoint it's going to move the humanoid to it and wait for it to move before moving again cool we are almost done here there's two more functions we've got a coroutine wrap so that this while true do will not disturb the rest of the code and we say while task the wait do we get the closest so it's uh every second or every uh, like 0 0.1 a second I think it would be or every task or wait in this in this case it will check if there is a closest player that has been talking so it runs the closest player function and it sends the players talking table into here and then we and we so basically it's saying lo local closest player is equal to this and in here it returns the closest player otherwise this thing isn't going to return everything anything so that's why we check if there's a closest player so if it has returned a closest player then we're going to move to the player and then in the move to player it's got the player position so we get into the closest player's character primary part and then to that position now next we have to actually put players that are talking into this table and when they stop talking take them out of the table and that is where this comes in so this function checks whenever a player joins the game and then gets the player that's joined and then it does the same for the character every time the player res respawns it gets the character and it finds the talking value in the character because this talking value will be put into the character every time they respawn so we use a wait for child for that and then we use get property change signal so we see whenever this value changes here this function will run so it checks if the value is true which would indicate the player is talking it looks in the table and if it if it doesn't find the players talking the player that was talking and so so that was a bit confusing so in the table if it doesn't find the player inside of the table then it will add them into the table because it would indicate that the player is talking else if the talking value was false and it finds the player in that table it gets the index which which is table.find and then it removes it from the table using that index so the index is basically the position inside the table and then it removes that position in the table okay so that is everything and if we play the voice chat might not work okay this time it worked if your voice chat isn't working you might have to join the actual game instead of in studio so now let's test this out hello and you can see he is going to my position but he won't attack i have not we have not coded him to attack if you want you can always put a like a hitbox around him and if the player touches him then he will attack you now let's change the max distance and let's put it down to 10 and let's go quite far away
There we go. So now if we talk, he shouldn't be able to hear us. Hello. As you can see, he didn't hear us. And if we go into our character, you can see the audio analyzer here and the talking value. So whenever we talk, the value is going up and down. Let's start to get a bit closer within the max distance. And he should start to hear us just now. Over here. Nope. There we go. So 10 is a bit short. Uh, you can always change the value. You can see I just went out again. There we go. Now he's talking. There we go. Sorry, now we're talking. So yeah, uh, that is it for today's video. Bye guys.